Good morning and welcome to Cleveland Park Congregational United Church of Christ. We are an open and affirming congregation. <clears throat> that means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. If you're visiting today, please sign our guest book in the entryway and join us for coffee hour afterwards. Um, if you're a member here, please remember to wear your name tag so new people know your name and people who have problems with names can remember your name. Um, we have a few um, announcements this morning, and then be sure to check your bulletin for all of them. Uh, the Bible discussion group will meet in person today and online after worship and coffee hour. The Faith Life group will meet today from 5.30 to 7 p.m. to discuss chapters 3 and 4 of Diana Butler ba Bass's latest book, Freeing Jesus, Rediscovering Jesus as Friend, Teacher, Senior, Lord, Way, and Presence. The Art and Culture group meets tomorrow and the Spirituality and Aging group meets on Tuesday, doing the dates in my head. Um, welcome to church. Thank you, Heidi. It's good to see you all this morning on this last Sunday of February. I actually can't believe that the month has flown. Uh, this last Sunday of February and first Sunday of Lent, Lent is the 40-day, not including Sundays, season leading up to Easter. It's a time of reflection and repentance, which means to turn. And so I encourage you during these 40 days to spend some time thinking about the places in your life that might benefit from a turnaround. Our Lenten theme this year is Seeking Honest Questions for Deeper Faith. And this morning's worship theme will focus on the question, to whom do we listen? You've each, I think by now, received a little card, um, and that is from the Sanctified Art series that um, we are benef benefiting from uh, this Lenten season. It's just for you and um, your own reflection and contemplation. I'll share some different versions every Sunday. and. Um, you may use them however you'd like. We begin this morning's service by lighting our candles of hope and healing for the world. Please join me for the call to worship. Listen. There is hope to be found here. Listen. I call this by your name here. Listen. Listen. And together we pray, Holy God, listening is always easier said than done we shuffle into church and try to quiet our minds but the list of distractions is long we need your help to listen today we ask you to marinate us in your word dust the cobwebs from our ears stir our souls awake Crack open our hearts to make room for you. Scoop us up, put us in your pocket. Carry us with you wherever you go. We want to hear you, really hear you. So speak to us now. With hope we pray, amen. Please rise in body or spirit for our opening hymn. You'll find the lyrics on an insert in your order of service or online.
each Sunday during the Lenten season. We'll share a confession different from our usual time for silent reflection, which we'll return to on Easter Sunday. And so I say, friends, if you are seeking grace, this moment is for you. If you are seeking growth, this moment is for you. If you are seeking honesty, this moment is for you. In the prayer of confession, we admit to ourselves and to God that we do not have it all figured out. And in that vulnerability, we are surrounded by God's grace. So let us pray together. Holy One, too often we treat your word like a radio station, something we can tune in and out of whenever it's convenient. Our minds are full of ads, emails, news, and notifications. In the midst of this, we gravitate toward voices that sound like our own, ignoring the ones being silenced, forgetting to listen to you. Forgive us for failing to listen. Forgive us for choosing life static over the sound of you. Drain the distractions from our minds and open our ears to all we need to hear. Amen. Beloveds, even when we tune out God, even when we prioritize other voices, even when we do all the talking and fail to listen, we are still held by a God of deep love. Our sins are forgiven. Nothing can separate us from this love. So with joy, I ask you to repeat after me, I am loved. I am held in grace. I belong to God. And now held by this God who is our parent, father and mother, we say together the prayer of Jesus, our brother. Mother, father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. those in the sanctuary to turn and share the peace and love of God with your neighbor in the pew. Peace be with you.
Welcome back, everyone. And before the children and youth come up for children's time, I just have a few more announcements. Um, one of them is related to the children and youth, and that is that um, our little food pantry is going strong in the parlor. Thank you so much for bringing your um, canned goods and toiletries and cleaning supplies, and please keep bringing them because the last Sunday of every month, which happens to be today, the children will be packing up everything into paper bags with handles or reusable bags with handles, which we need. And John C. will be taking them over to the St. Luke's Food Pantry. So just a reminder to keep bringing those in. Um, right next to the Little Food Pantry, we now have, as of this Sunday, a racial justice library. Thanks to the initiative of Ann Lordeman and our new racial justice advisory team, nay, racial justice audit team. Um, so we've got a number of different books there. There's an easy sign-out system, and we hope you will all take advantage of that. Um, in addition, one other sign-up sheet, sign sheet, not sign-out sheet, sign-up sheet, um, the fellowship team has decided that um, it would be wise to go back to the old-fashioned way of signing people up for coffee hour. And while you can still sign up on Sign Up Genius, for those of you who are familiar with that and comfortable with doing that, you can also just pick up a pen in the parlor and sign up to host coffee hour um, any Sunday that you're available to do that. And Trish and any other member of the fellowship committee can support you in that. There are instructions for everything. It's actually super easy. So we hope you will, will join us for that, or we hope you will sign up for that. All right, now, children and youth, come on up. We need a table for this today. You'll see why. We don't need the, there we go. Oh, good. We've got, a, we've got more mac and cheese. Excellent. Perfect. All right. Do you want to put that right there so everybody can see what they can bring for the food pantry? Yes. Awesome. See, and I like your idea. Like every time you come to church, just bring one thing, right? Every time you go grocery shopping, put one more item into your cart and then share. All right. I have some letters. And I have a feeling, Pearl, you're going to be the one who is going to be helping me with these letters because I think that Lila and Mabel are probably still learning their letters. Am I right? You, you already know your letters? Awesome. Then you can help. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right. Pearl, I'm going to see what word you might be able to make out of these letters. And don't worry if it's a little challenging. I'm happy to help you. Okay, the letters are, okay, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. Okay, yes, you definitely, but you have to use all of them. All right, Pearl totally made a word. S-E-T is set, totally. Okay, I'm going to give you a Yes, excellent. You know, the puzzle, as I know from Sunday this morning on NPR, is not always easy. All right? Sometimes you puzzle until your puzzler is sore, as the Grinch said. Right? Okay. Now, the word listen is one word you can make out of these six letters. But did you know there's another word you can make out of these six letters? I'll help you out. And then you see if you can finish it. What's the other word? Silent. That's right. All right. You get the NPR um, puzzle book and um, keychain or whatever. That was great. Good job. Okay. So now, Lila and Mabel, Pearl found out that there are two words she can make from the same letters. Listen and silent. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about. 
sometimes if we really want to hear God's voice, we have to be really quiet and listen. Because if we're jabbering or if we're talking to, what? Blah, 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 exactly, right? Remember those, have you ever seen the Charlie Brown cartoons where they have the adults going, wah, 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 yeah. So if you're jabbering or wah, wahing, it's really hard to hear. But if you're quiet, let's just be really quiet for a second. And tell me if you hear. Yeah, my mic. There we go. Thank you. Tell me what you hear when you're really quiet. I will sit up straight, Serena. <laughs> okay. What do you hear? Silence. And then inside the silence, can you hear, oh, I heard a car going by outside. A strange whirring noise that might be the heat or the fan in back. More cars. So we're hearing the silence in the sanctuary and then a little bit of noise outside the sanctuary. But if you get really quiet, inside yourself, then sometimes you can hear God. Do you hear God? What do you hear when you listen to God? To do good things? He's telling you to do good things. All right. That's, I mean, that's a good voice to have inside your head, right? Some, something that guides you to doing good things. I think that also a voice of God in our heads who we can call he or she, right? Because, really, sometimes God might be saying how much we're loved. Because we're very loved. We're loved. Because sometimes we might not think that we're loved, but inside, God's telling us that we are because a lot of people love like like us like everybody here has somebody that is their friend and their friends can encourage them so necessarily everybody has somebody that they can count on i agree completely pearl and i think that that is how we can also look at god as some we don't know exactly what god is but we can feel that god is somebody something, a spirit, a love to count on. And when sometimes things aren't going so great in our lives, we can hold that in our heart. So, everybody up for a group hug? You up for a group hug? Okay. Group hug? Okay. Because I honestly, like, All right. Mm. Love you guys so much. All right. Have a great time downstairs with Bella, and I'll see you in coffee hour when you're packing up that good food. Our scripture reading today comes from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. 
Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, God will command the angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Holy One to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship God and serve only the Holy One. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Thank you, Callie. As I said at the beginning of the service, Lent is the 40-day, not including Sundays, season leading up to Easter. Traditionally, it was a time of prayer, fasting, and repentance modeled on the story of Jesus' 40-day retreat in the wilderness that Callie just told us about. These days, even if you don't give up meat, a traditional Lenten practice, it's a good opportunity to think about what action, behavior, or thought pattern you'd like to change during this time. It could be something you stop doing, begin to do, or do differently. It's also a good opportunity to initiate some sort of spiritual practice from naming three things for which you're grateful each evening, to spending time in silence, listening for God's voice each morning. As I said to the children, it's interesting the words listen and silence have the same letters. We must be silent in order to listen. This was a key takeaway from Kristen Cott's Coffee Hour presentation a few weeks ago when she shared resources for supporting one another in times of grief and loss. Listening means staying silent and attentive. Simply hearing what the other person has to say. No commentary, no judgment, no advice. It made me think about all the times we speak, and silence is the better path. This is true in relation to spirit and self as well. Just as it's necessary to be silent in order truly to hear another person, we can only hear ourselves and our God when we stop speaking and just listen. Notice that entire phrase, stop speaking, just listen. Meaning we must first stop whatever it is we're doing, speaking, working, worrying, busying, stop. And then listen. Meaning open our hearts and our souls and our ears to whatever the other person, ourselves, or our God is saying. Only then will we be able to hear. Let's try a simple exercise, a spiritual practice in which you listen, which you stop listening to my voice. I'm going to say that again. Let's try a simple exercise a spiritual practice in which you stop listening to my voice and tune into spirit and your own true self. I'll begin with a prayer, then we'll stop and just listen for one minute. This may seem long or short to you. In either case, I invite you to open yourself during this time to whatever spirit has to say. When the minute is up, I'll say amen. Let us pray. 
in a world full of noise, God is speaking. In a world full of chaos, God is healing. In a world full of temptation, God is guiding. Who will we listen to? What will we listen for? The voice of God who calls us beloved. Amen. That was just a little over a minute. The end of that prayer, the line was, the voice of God who calls us beloved. Henri Nouwen, a Dutch priest and prolific author, wrote in his book, Life of the Beloved, over the years I have come to realize that the greatest trap in our life is not success, popularity or power, but self-rejection. Success, popularity, and power can indeed present great temptation, but their seductive quality often comes from the way they are part of the much larger temptation of self-rejection. When we have come to believe in the voices that call us worthless and unlovable, then success, popularity, and power are easily perceived as attractive solutions. The real trap, however, is self-rejection. Self-rejection is the greatest enemy of the spiritual life because it contradicts the sacred voice that calls us beloved. Being the beloved constitutes the core truth of our existence. For me, Nowen's words are an interesting lens through which to view this morning's scripture reading. In his view, the temptation in the wilderness isn't just a struggle between the tempter and all the success, popularity, and power being offered, and Jesus' commitment to his own path and God's word. It's a struggle within Jesus about which voice he's able to hear. To whom is he going to listen? Mind you, in this story, Jesus has been alone and fasting in the desert for 40 days when the tempter arrives, and it's right at the beginning of his three-year ministry, meaning he's still a newbie. It would have been really tempting to take an easier path, one that soothed the troubling messages in his head. Am I really meant to do this? Who do I think I am? I'm frightened. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I'm so alone. The tempter knew this, as the tempter in our head typically does. Hence the offers, bread, 
proof of infallibility, worldly wealth, and security. Listen to me, the tempter says, and you won't have to worry about your identity or your hunger or your vulnerability. I'll help you focus so hard on things outside yourself, you'll forget you even have a true self. I'll feed your ego. I'll keep you busy and distracted with all sorts of shiny things. You won't ever have to worry about the voice of self-rejection because you'll be so detached, you won't even notice. Yet here's the rub. Right before Jesus went into the desert to meditate and fast, he was baptized in the River Jordan by John. Again, this is before his ministry has even begun. He was baptized by John. And as he came out of the river, he heard a voice, You are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. You are my beloved God told Jesus who he was, and Jesus listened. You are my beloved. Then he went into the wilderness, the desert, with these words in his head. You are my beloved. You are my beloved. You are my beloved. Imagine meditating for 40 days in the vast quiet with this mantra. You are my beloved. And this is the voice to whom he listened. This is the voice that carried him through those 40 days. This is the voice that allowed him to reject the voice of the tempter rather than rejecting himself and, as Nouwen writes, the true core of his existence, that he was beloved. So this Lent, I wonder if we might want to follow Jesus by meditating on this same truth, that we are beloved, knowing that there are all sorts of voices in our heads that tell us we are not, that tempt us to self-rejection, that want to pull us away with all sorts of shiny things so that we don't have to feel so bad about ourselves when we could just accept we are beloved. What if we were to wake up every morning, look in the mirror and say, I am beloved. I didn't earn it. I don't deserve it. It's not because of anything I did or didn't do. I'm just beloved. What if we were to tell ourselves before we go to sleep every night, oh, right, I'm beloved. And what if we were to meditate on this one mantra in silence for even just one minute every day. I am beloved. How might this change us? What temptations might lose their power over us? I'm curious to find out. Amen. Please join me for a moment of meditation.
is now the time in our service when we share our deep joys and concerns silently or out loud with God and with one another. I'll share those we've already received, plus any posted in the chat room, and then invite those in the sanctuary to share. Sam will bring you the microphone. God, hear our healing prayers for Dorothy's cousin's mother, Angela, who's had a series of bad falls. Tate, who's in residential treatment. Jaden, a Shaw Community Center teen who was shot last fall and is now home in a wheelchair with a feeding tube. If you'd like to help his family, please see the GoFundMe link in our weekly prayer email. And for all friends and family of our congregation who are managing long-term health concerns and diagnoses. God, hear our prayers for the country and people of Ukraine at the one-year mark of Russia's invasion. Jane's friend Mike, his wife Mercedes, and daughter Nora as he begins home hospice care. The family and friends of Tate's friend Angie who died this month. The family, friends, students, and colleagues of Stoddart Elementary teacher Mark McCants who died this month. All friends and family of our congregation who are grieving the loss of loved ones and anyone anywhere who is sick or grieving, or in need. Other concerns? Dan. Uh, this week marked the birthdays of two good friends who died in the past year far too soon, and I just want to remember all those who loved them and their importance in my life. So for Monty and Fiona. Thank you. Other concerns? All right, we'll go to Joy's. God, we give thanks for the educational opportunities of Black History Month, the life and service of former President Jimmy Carter, Darnella Frazier, who recorded the police killing George Floyd. Jane reminds us that Darnella felt compelled to hit record because she thought the world needed to see what she was seeing. And all those who devote their lives to creating peace, joy, and justice in this world. Other joys. Catherine. I think everybody thinks what I do, that um, you planted Pearl, <laughs> right? Because Absolutely. I gave her a script ahead of time. She totally filled in the, she impersonated what you were saying. And I figure the answer to your question if we would all listen and hear that we would be loved, what would we, how would we change? Maybe we'd be more like Pearl. <laughs> I love it, thank you. Be Pearl. Uh, a joy for my father's 80th birthday, which we celebrated this week, and that he and my mother still generally have their health and that they're close by and able to spend time with us and their grandson. Wonderful, happy birthday to him. Any other joys? Let us pray. Loving God, listen to the prayers of your people comfort and nourish us in both our joys and our concerns, spoken or unspoken, and hold us tenderly as we face the many different experiences that life and being human can bring. Holy and gracious Spirit, we are grateful for your presence as we move into this new week, a time that will bring forth its own sorrows and joys. 
Remind us to hold one another in love and prayer, reaching out as we are able to lend a hand, offer support, or share in celebration. We give thanks for the blessing of this congregation in our lives and pray that we might be a blessing to others in return. In your compassionate name, amen. I invite you to continue holding all of these joys and concerns in your heart as our choir offers us, we are one.
So much choir. Last Sunday, you heard Chris Davis share a new call to offering written by Callie McCarthy. The worship committee and leadership team have decided to try something different this spring with a member of the congregation sharing a new call to offering the third Sunday of each month, which will then be shared by me the following few Sundays. As always, your input is valued, so please let us know how you like this. In this, our time for offering, we heed the invitation of poet Wendell Berry who writes, friends, Every day, do something that won't compute. This is our charge, then. To usurp the ways of scarcity, of harshness, of tit for tat. To give our time and attention to those who cannot return it. To hold joy and sorrow in both of our hands. To be profoundly inefficient and call it process. Call it honesty, call it patience, call it the movement of the Holy One. Offer your skills, share your money, trust that love is more than a nice idea. This giving, this holding, this inefficiency, this offering, this sharing, this trusting, it doesn't make sense, it doesn't compute. But that, my friends, is precisely where grace finds us. So let us meet it with open arms and curious minds and generous hearts. Our worship support folks will soon pass the plates around the sanctuary please feel welcome to contribute as you can through the offering plate, the QR code on the back of your worship bulletin, or the link in the online chat. To those who have already donated, I invite you to take an offering card in the pew rack and put it in the plate as a symbol of your giving. And for those who give of their time and skill through participation in committees and childcare in all the behind the scenes support that keeps our wheels turning, I offer many, many thanks.
please remain standing in body or spirit for our closing hymn, Commission and Sung Benediction. Our closing hymn is found on page 180 of the Red Hymnal. And now as we leave this place, may God bless us with seeking. Seek out the hungry. Seek out the weary. Seek the good in every person you pass. Seek out the hopeful. Seek out the faithful. Seek God in each of us. As we seek and as we wonder, May we find what we are looking for. In the name of our loving God, who is always seeking us. Please join in our sung benediction. Mm -hmm.